Well, hello, and welcome to my lecture on intelligence. I have to be honest with you, I always feel a little funny when I give this lecture because I'm not sure how to define intelligence, and it's a little curious to give a lecture on something that you can't even define. But I don't feel too bad about it. You'll know why in just a second. Let me read for you the official definition of intelligence that comes from the American Psychological Association. Okay, so lots of experts got together and came up with a definition of intelligence, and here it is. Individuals differ from one another in their ability to understand complex ideas, to adapt effectively to the environment, to learn from experience, to engage in various forms of reasoning, to overcome obstacles by thought. Although these individual differences can be substantial, they are never entirely consistent. A given person's intellectual performance will vary on different occasions, in different domains, as judged by different criteria. Concepts of intelligence are attempts to clarify and organize this complex set of phenomena. Although considerable clarity has been achieved in some areas, no such conceptualization has yet answered all of the important questions, and none commands universal assent. Indeed, when two dozen prominent theorists were recently asked to define intelligent, they gave two dozen somewhat different definitions. What does that even mean? It's a big definition, isn't it? Well, let's try to simplify it a bit, shall we? Um, intelligence is some sort of general mental ability. It's not book smarts, right? It's not many how many facts you can rattle off or dates or whatever. It has something to do with your ability to learn from experience and something to do with your ability to understand your surroundings. It's kind of the ability to figure things out, to catch on, to understand what's going on. There are, as you can imagine from that huge definition, there are many unanswered questions about the concept of intelligence. Here's two biggies. First, is intelligence one thing or a lot of different things? Depends who you ask. I'll tell you a little about both arguments. Is intelligence something you're born with or somebody, something that your environment nurtures? I'll talk about that later too. But the fact that these questions, these basic questions are as yet unanswered tells you that we are in an area where there's a lot of controversy. People have been wondering about what intelligence is for a long time. So you've got these quotes from uh, Albert Einstein saying that the measure of intelligence is the ability to change, to someone arguing that grades don't measure intelligence and age doesn't define maturity. How did we get to this place? Well, it's always good to start at the beginning. And the beginning occurred in France in 1882. That's a year when the French government decided that everyone in France needed to go to elementary school. Before that, schooling was optional. In 1882 in France, it became obligatory. Now, the folks who started schooling for the first time realized that some of the children were going to attend school and have no idea what school was about or not have a lot of understanding of schoolwork or studies in, in a classroom. And so they hired this man, Alfred Benet, um, to help identify students who might need a little help at the beginning to get up to speed with everyone else who was starting school. So Benet started modern intelligence testing with the goal of identifying which students could benefit from a little extra academic support. And the way he did that was to create a series of problems and questions that could or couldn't be answered by children of different age groups. 
And so he'd give children these tests and from them calculate what their mental age was. Not their chronological age, not many, how many years they've been on the planet, but their, their mental age, their reasoning ability, if you will. And uh, Binet argued that children who had a mental age below their actual chronological age could benefit from some extra help. That was the start of intelligence testing. The whole point of it was to nurture the development of, it, of intelligence, not to label people. But then this guy got a hold of the Stanford, uh, of the Binet intelligence test. His name is Lewis Terman, and he changed the intelligence test for a very nasty, kind of hard to imagine reason. Terman believed in the field of eugenics, and eugenics is a field that attempts to make human beings better by deciding which human beings are allowed to have children and which ones are not. I'm not kidding. And I guess you might wonder, well, who's going to decide which of us is allowed to have children and which of us is not? Well, of course, people like Lewis Terman. But for his purposes, what Terman wanted was a test that would identify the smartest and the brightest people. So he took Binet's exam and twisted it so that it did the opposite of what it was designed to do. In Terman's case, now the test was used to label people who were smart enough to be allowed to have children. He kept the original idea of um, mental age over chronological age. That is how your like, intelligence corresponds to a particular set of age standards relative to your actual physical age. Um, and if you do that, then you set the average intelligence, for children at least, to 100. So say you have a five-year-old children who's able to uh, solve problems and answer questions like your typical five-year-old children child, then you would have an IQ equation of five over five, which is one times 100. One times 100 is 100. So that is a very brief overview of the crazy um, changes that occurred in intelligence testing. We don't use Terman's exam um, equation anymore. Uh, we don't use the, the basic equations anymore because that equation makes an interesting assumption. And the assumption is that we learn, or at least are capable of learning, the same amount every year of our life. Now, that's just not realistic, right? Uh, can you, the difference between a two-year-old and a three-year-old in intelligence is, is quite large, but the difference between a 52-year-old and a 53-year-old is small, very small, maybe negative, I don't know. But uh, you can't say that one year difference means the same thing for every age group. So folks get, get away from the, got away from the original definition, but they kept uh, some of the ideas. IQ tests to this day are always set so the average IQ is 100. That's my introduction to intelligence. Come back and we'll talk about IQ testing.